Hello. Today what I'm going to be doing is reviewing the new Gen 2 Survival Push Point. The Survival Bush Point is a design that I created many years ago. I was able to put it into production and many folks have had it in their hand and it's been using it for a couple years now. It has proven itself to me and others as one of the best survival knives out there. The reason why is for what it can do. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of the ones that are for sale. They have wood scales and a leather sheath. It has that old school look to it. So if you're into the old school look that many folks are and also it performs well, this may be for you. Now I have a few that are wood scales and such. But I just wanted to try something a little different. So I actually got my Carta scales put on this one and a Kydex sheath. Now this is the same blade as the ones that are on sale so we're going to be testing this blade. Right there is the balance point which makes this a very nice knife for carving. Put your hand right up here. I usually put my finger right inside the notches here like this so I can get up as close to my cutting edge as possible. The closer you get to your cutting edge the more power and control you have of your knife. So a great balance point but I put my lanyard on I can go back like this it cannot come out of my hand and now I have the weight for a chopper because a survival knife has to be able to bring down a tree the size of my arm in case I need a ridge pole for a shelter in my opinion. So a survival knife has to chop. This is a frozen birch tree as you can see. For me, a survival blade also has to be able to delimb a tree quickly. You may need brush for a shelter, for bedding, and so on. So having the length and the weight to chop and delimb, very important in any survival knife in my opinion. It is very important that my knife can also baton. Being able to split that wood when everything is soaked out here but I can get to the inside of the wood where it's dry. So it's very important that my knife can hold up to batoning. This piece of wood here is totally dry in the inside so I'm going to split it. I normally cut this into the size that I need but I'm testing the blade. Having a long blade I have plenty of blade left that I can pound on after I get through to baton it. But I can also baton up to about a four, even a five inch log to split it, which I have 
with the other bush points. Let's uh, start splitting this. Well, there's one piece. <laughs> This one here, this one here, apparently is just going to keep splitting off like that. But each piece I get is another piece of firewood. I'm going to spin it around like this. We're going to try from this end now. <laughs> I am driving this right down through. There must be a big, yeah, there's a bunch of knots right here, but I'm driving it right through my support. But, just goes to show the strength of this blade. There we go. It's got to be able to baton. See the nice dry interior? Awesome. So it has to do the big jobs, but it also has to do small jobs. It's got to be an all-around one-tool option. This here has proven itself to be that. Many people have processed game with this. And also people have built shelters with this, I included. It has done everything that I've wanted a survival knife to do. It also has one other feature that I'm going to explain in a second. But, as for carving, it carves really nice. Fine feather sticks, you can do that, but you can also bite in, get bigger feather sticks, just to get that next size up, and so on. You can go as big as you want, you can cut as deep as you want, as long as you have the power to put behind it, it works very nice. Now, let's go over the other feature that I designed in the Survival Bush Point. What makes the Survival Bush Point unique is this is your bush knife, your all-around camp knife, and utility knife in the woods. You can also use it around home. It was designed to be a knife first, but... If you're lost out there or stranded and you hear a bunch of coyotes coming in and so on, you only have a knife for defense, I designed this so the scales are removed. They have a slotted plus a Phillips head on them that you can use two coins, take them out, and if you notice the shape of the blade, you can attach a shaft or a handle. To this you just split your shaft push it up through up to about this point right here this is your top tie off you can tie it real tight around these notches comes around it's tied here tight tied here and you can get a lot of leverage behind this 
if you're slashing or stabbing. This is not meant to be thrown. It is not meant to stick in a tree and pry with, like most blades are not. But this one here is for defense. If you have to defend yourself from a predator that's coming in, you can put on a three, four foot pole or six foot if you're proficient with that. I like the shorter handle just because I can swing it like a bat if I have to. It's up to you. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. But having that option, instead of just lashing this beside a pole, this here makes it a lot more secure and a formidable defensive weapon if need be. So the blade edge took no damage whatsoever. Chopping into that totally frozen birch tree, that's why I did that. If it's gonna chip, it would have there. Also, me beating on that with the baton, driving that right down through that other dead log, that was uh, pretty unexpected. But I was beating on that hard, and it just goes to show the strength of this blade. Once it fetched up on the bottom, then the blade actually broke through, cut through those knots, and went down through. You can also see the thickness of the blade here. It's a um, good 3 16 maybe a little bit more. I'm not quite sure. The specs are most likely in the website, but there's very few of these available right now. So I drop over to uh, Reptile Toolworks and check them out. But this here has been a great blade and I just wanted to share it with you all because having a good survival knife that you can count on can save your life.